It's live on KEXP. I'm your host, DJ Kevin Cole from Independent Listener Power, 90.3 FM in Seattle, 92.7 FM in the Bay Area, and streaming 24-7 at KEXP.org. KEXP is a nonprofit arts organization. These live performances are made possible by donations from listeners and people just like you. And I am so happy to be joined today by Feist. Welcome. Thank you. Hi. I can't believe it. Uh, this hasn't happened before. I know. I feel the same way. Well, here we are. Yeah, it is so great having you here. Multitudes is amazing. Uh, how about we hear a set of music and then we can talk about it and anything else? Sure, sounds good. Cool. But we're going to start with something from 10 years ago, 12 years ago. Feist live on KEXP. I had more One breath 
sad on time The only one there Another day to be alone in Another lake to throw a stone Soft in the heart Where heart and edges align And try to be a good friend Most of the time Too much of a good thing When even freedom wears thin So what's got a for forever to begin
Christ live on KEXT. Everybody's got their shit And who's got the guts to see what's it Everybody's on their own And that way we're never alone But to me we're in another's eyes So what we should probably say Live on KEXP, just heard Love you, Love Who You Are Meant To, right before that, Hiding Out in the Open, both from the most recent album, Multitudes, Century from Pleasure from 2017, and from the new record, Forever Before, and started off that set with The Circle Married, The Line from 2011's Metals. A beautiful set of music. Thank you so much. Leslie, would you introduce your... Uh, Fantastic band. It would be my pleasure. This is Amir Yagmai, Rose Droll, Todd Dahlhoff, and Mr. Andrew Barr. It's great having you all here. Thank you. So Work on Multitudes began following the birth of your daughter in 2019. Then there was the pandemic and the mm -hmm. death of your father in 2021. That's a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> that is I'll, a lot. I'll just go ahead and agree with you. <laughs> Um, how did writing songs help you through this period? Well, yeah. I mean, all of those things are are, are kind of crucibles and their first-time experiences of um, becoming a mother and facing death and then a global pandemic. All three of those things yeah. were pretty yeah. fresh Such to Such extremes. Experience. And um, I think that at first I started to write kind of as a, a sense 
of locating myself again because I was I was pretty diffused. Mm-hmm. I was I was sort of isolated from what would normally be the busy making of life and I was thinking that perhaps music would never happen again in this kind of scenario. And I was entering so many other new things that I, in fact I felt like music was kind of company to help me remember the person who had decided to become a mother, the person who had, yeah. you know, who had uh, lived the era that I felt was in a way had now ended. And so it was, yeah, it was sort of, um, it was medicinal, inward facing medicine. Mm-hmm. Um, your father was an abstract painter. Was he a creative confidant? Yeah, in his way. That's a good question. Yeah, we, we I think we were eventually able to speak about, um, you know, the whatever the spark of facing an empty canvas or facing empty air to begin something to um, to put yourself into the void and what you might find there. In, in a way, painting and songwriting, we could speak about essentials rather than the mechanics of it because we didn't do the same thing. So in that way, there was a, there was a lot of kind of vague yet um, sort of a soul-specific stuff that we could talk about that didn't get into each other's territory, therefore mm-hmm. it was safe territory, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. it must have been remarkable to spend, you know, the, the early pandemic time with him and your daughter in that kind of space as you're working on new material. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was, in some ways, for sure, I was I was isolating out in the woods with, with kind of a summer camp of friends and... Um, and kind of, I called it the coven, the, all the friends that surrounded my daughter and I. And, uh, and my dad was, yeah, he was around, but I think he was also in, in his hermit stage, yeah. which I had to respect. Doing his own thing. Yeah. So the album came out about a year ago, April 14th, 2023. In 2021 and 2022, you embarked on a, a work in progress residency. Mm-hmm. Um, and at that point in time, how many of the songs had actually been finished or written? Yeah, uh, that's a good question. I think they were they were they were pencil sketches. Maybe the the arrangements were pretty clear, but the lyrics were still malleable. And um, it was a trio show actually with Todd and Amir and I, and we developed the show kind of in tandem with with, with finishing the yeah. songs and every song every night there were, there were two shows because it was more of a well it, i mean the show was in a time when shows had ceased to be and it was that be- that moment when there was a gentle re-entry and very um small groups of people getting together again and so because of that and because of all the all that i had been through that had kind of wiped the slate clean i felt that why did gigs need to take place the way they always had been there was sort of an there was an opening there and a fresh moment to reconsider the audience and performer relationship that had been got gotten a bit baked in. Um, and so the show was halfway balancing in uh, more of a theater presentation. And it was, so it was twice a night. We were, we were almost, you know, like Broadway. Uh, we had to muscle up to be able to play yeah. a seven o'clock and nine o'clock. But that advantage was that the songs could keep developing at seven o'clock. I'd hear, a lyric come out of my mouth that I'd think that doesn't that doesn't make any sense, and so I'd adjust it for nine o'clock. So it was almost like an inductive process to write the record on tour and have the songs take form and sort of become more and more believable to me in a live context. Yeah, part of the reason I was asking was it just seems like a really cool, unusual way to uh, you know work songs or or write them while you're sharing them with an audience live yeah. and had you ever done anything like that before no absolutely not but um when my manager robbie lackwards called and said hey you know that idea you had years ago for a show you wanted to do in the round that was in every practical way impossible <laughs> well now might yeah. be a time when it it could be made possible and i said well i mean I can't barely leave the house with my four-month-old child, let alone, I mean, there's a pandemic raging around. I, how are we supposed to even begin this? Um, and, you know, he said, well, no, I'm talking six months, a year from now. At some point, there's going to be a moment when this could happen. And so I said, well, if it's six months or a year from now, then it's going to be all new songs. It was sort of my own, I like, threw, threw my gauntlet down and said, I, I, nothing of me wants to relate to the past right now. I'm only looking into the future and trying to figure out what it might be able to be so it was a challenge in a way to just 
begin from scratch in every way, in terms of how a show should look, what songs I wanted to hear coming out of myself, you know, finding this um, theatrical way to go about it. Yeah, it was... Yeah. It was the first and possibly last time I get to do that. <laughs> well, what what a gift! What a what a great reentry gift for us all. Yeah, uh, and to have an album that's so beautiful and so sublime, and one that to me just sort of suspends time, come out of that process is remarkable. Well, thank you. It was a time out of time, wasn't it? It really was. Yeah, <laughs> um, and. Yeah, it's changed a lot, um, and I, I I like what you said about the concept or the way of doing shows had kind of become baked in, you know, and like, why not challenge that? Mm-hmm. Under normal uh, circumstances, it's really difficult to change, to paradigm shift, or, you yeah. know, to, there's a lot of practical considerations to going on tour, and um, the pandemic did a lot to expose how everyone was sort of dangling maybe one gig in front of the other, just trying to... All the, so many musicians were just we didn't realize holding holding on by a thread, and then the system kind of fell apart around us, and so in a way, there's been a lot of reinvention necessary from yeah. a lot of touring musicians. Speaking of paradigm shifts, how has songwriting for you changed being a mother? Oh uh, well, there's I haven't written a song really since. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that's the practical elements, right? Just finding yeah. time to write, oh, but no, also that's thematically. Not true. I was saying I haven't written a song since she was born, but no, that's, that's absolutely not true. It was just that since she's become, she's risen into her sentient yes. times, since she's become a, a responder rather than like my my little muse, you know what I mean? Yeah. Does she like your music? Uh, <laughs> Does she respond? A, if I sing f- songs from Frozen, she loves it. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, I don't know. She's She's aware that I play music, but I don't think she cares either way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, multitudes is, is a great sort of concept and way to describe the various facets of being and uh, of self. And there's such a range of emotions um, on the album Multitudes. Do you feel these songs are different aspects of yourself individually? Or was the process of writing the songs and coming up with Multitudes as the the title, sort of more of a, just a collective group sense of feelings. It might refer to that, what we were speaking about time, that time had become such a elastic and kind of abstract uh, concept because the days were running one into the other. There was a, you know, we couldn't quite refer to our past because there wasn't much there that was helping us in this present. The future looked a bit uncertain and, and being in this, you know, on elasticized in this transformation myself, I I think I was thinking a lot about the six year old me, the sixty six year old me, the ninety six year old me, the roles that we play through life. Mm-hmm. You know, the I'm the daughter, I'm the mother, I'm the grandmother, I'm the you know, I'm the friend, I'm the foe. These these roles that you know, think of all the people in your life and what you are to each of them. It's there are. There are many versions of you out there in the world in people's minds and conception of you and feelings towards you. And I think I was, I was just, I was feeling it all, yeah. <laughs> all of that. Uh, there's a lot to feel there. And um, that's, that's a perspective that we, we don't have until later uh, or something of the magnitude of a pandemic uh, creates that opportunity or, or forces that. But uh, this past week, I think, is the 20th anniversary of Let It Die. Speaking of time. <laughs> exactly. So yeah. uh, have you had a, had a moment to reflect on that specific time? Does, is this like an opportunity to do that? It, well, that, I guess that's what, um, you know, birthdays or anniversaries, they, they help us hold up vague memories and get a bit, bit more specific. Like I ended up digging through my hard drive and trying to figure out are there even like trying to remember? Did I have a camera? I certainly didn't have a phone. You know that these like life was incredibly different at that point. Uh, I lived in France, and uh, yeah, I was I was kind of in a moment of reinvention because to be foreign somewhere. I was a Canadian in France, and my joke with my friends who had all moved to Europe around the same time was, you know, only in France could a Canadian singer be slightly exotic like it doesn't (laughs) happen anywhere else and there was this there was a moment where I stepped into what what, you know I I let myself do what 
that album allowed me to do, which was be a bit more intentional. And, um, you know, I'd come from kind of the DIY, make your own records, no one really hears them. Broken Social Scene was was forming and making You Forgot It in People at the same exact time as I was making Let It Die. And I was in both, I was in both situations. So I felt like I was hiding in France making this kind of pop music that I didn't really want them to know about. <laughs> because besides Evan Cranley, everyone was a little concerned for me when they first heard it. In fact, the King's really? Convenience as well, that, who I had been playing with, they were a little concerned for me. What are you doing? Are you sure about this? You know, like it just wasn't in my lexicon previously yeah. at that time. Um, such a great record. Well, thank you. And, um, you know, you just played a couple older songs. I was going to ask if you connect with some of the older songs, and you do play Mush and Boom, I know, yeah. on this tour. Yeah, we play Let It Die as well. I, I mean, there's, yeah, I, 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 these guys often remind me that I think a song is from The Reminder, and they say, no, that's from Let It Die, or I think it's from Metals, and they say that's from The Reminder. I mean, I'm, I'm, uh, they've all kind of become just a, a pool of songs, and I, I, they all feel like... They're from, yeah, from a long time ago now at this point when there's songs from 20 years ago to draw on. Yeah. I'm sure you're constantly looking ahead. So do you ever take a moment to just actually listen to an album again, like perhaps Let It Die on its anniversary and go, wow, that was a kind of a killer song I forgot about <laughs> that reemerges and takes a new shape and form? Well, I yeah, I, I guess I haven't listened to Let It Die in a long time. I, maybe I that would be a fun headphone Hike Maybe. in the rain in Seattle. <laughs> yeah. It is Vice Live on KEXP. Um, how about uh, 2024 and beyond, your, your dreams and desires for the future? Well, I'm looking forward to this tour we're embarking on. It's being with this group of people, and, and it's not our own tour, so there's a strange opportunity to dig deep on the B-sides and just play whatever we want every night. So we're going to play entirely to entertain ourselves on this, this next run we're on. Um, and then I'm really just looking forward to swimming in a lake and barbecuing things and, uh, you know, pick, collecting stones and putting them in a pile and just very simple, simple yeah. goals. Having a summer. Yeah, having a summer. It is Vice Live on KEXP. Thank you so much for taking the time uh, to play for us today. Really appreciate it. I mean, walking in here today felt like, wow, I've, I've been here many times, but it's been two-dimensional. Walking yeah. into the real space, was, was, it's a real pleasure to be here. Well, thanks it, for having us. It's great to have you and fantastic performance. Huge thanks to the crew. And uh, thanks to everybody listening and watching and everybody who donates. Again, KEXP performances are made possible uh, by listeners just like you. So uh, thanks to everybody uh, listening and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You'll get notifications when sessions go live. And again, appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Kevin Cole. This is live on KEXP. <laughs> Discover new music at kexp.org.